Thank you. And we're going to basically continue that discussion with Mr. Huff in asking, because federal inaction has behooved states to act, if you could give us some examples of what states have done and their relative successes, challenges that they faced in acting in lieu of you know, federal action. Uh, sure. I mean, one thing we all can agree on is there has been federal inaction on this. Just the fact that we don't know how many illegal immigrants are in the country should tell us a sign that there's been a great deal of inaction. And part of the problem, and I know the other panels will get into this too, has been a lack of enforcement at the border. And also our visa program is broken, where if people want to bring people in legally, the numbers are capped for agricultural workers. And it's, I mean, literally within the first couple days that these visas are open, they fill up. And I know the last uh, administration tried to change that, but uh, all that aside, the federal government has not enforced this, has not been enforcing their laws. And so it is falling on the states. And the border states, um, have, were the first states to start. Uh, Arizona put in some very tough laws. And one of the laws Arizona put in was, a, was similar to what the sheriff's doing, but doing it on a statewide basis. That basically when you have someone who's arrested, they have the local counties all are mandated that they have to check the citizenship status of that person. So that uh, you're taking individuals who've already broken the law once by entering our country illegally, now they've broken the law again on another crime. These individuals, we need to know their citizenship status, and we need to turn them over and send them back. We need to send the federal government, the, the sheriff here has been partnering with the ICE program. ICE can deport them out, but the local law enforcement has the power to ask anyone that's arrested what their citizenship status is. The Supreme Court ruled 9-0 to zero that they have that power. So state legislatures can have their local law enforcement agencies ask, when people are arrested, are you here legally or not? We think they should do that. We also think that if somebody is caught, that we sh they shouldn't be allowed. In Virginia, they have a law that there's a presumption against bail for illegal aliens. Basically that they're not eligible to be bailed out of jail. Why? Because they're a flight risk. They can simply cross, go across the border and come, come back again when they want. I mean, if you look at it, and I'll, I'll read something to you. Uh, one of my uh, legislative members in Arizona sent this to me, that this is just in the beginning of this month, across the border, they confiscated 8,655 pounds of marijuana, valued over $7 million, and 208 pounds of cocaine, and they arrested six criminal aliens, four of which were already wanted felons in the United States. And that's just the first couple of weeks in February here. So obviously by releasing these individuals on bail uh, is not a good idea. And uh, there should be a screening. I think we all should agree that, and I'm very hopeful that the Department of Homeland Security, they've sent out some press releases that I think uh, show that they're going in this direction too, that we cannot tolerate illegal aliens who are in this country illegally and they're committing crimes while they're here. These individuals need to be screened and they need to be turned over to the federal government where therefore they can be deported. Thank you. And in terms of future plans, it's, we have a new administration. We don't know if they're going to make immigration reform a priority or not. Uh, are you, as your organization, essentially taking a wait and see attitude to see if immigration reform is going to be at the forefront of you know, congressional policy, or are you already gearing up, you mentioned in your introduction, 1,500 bills it's grown to on a local mm -hmm. level. What uh, plans do you know of on a local level to uh, address uh, you know, immigration from this point forward? Well, I, I think states shouldn't wait for the federal government. Uh, I think states need to take certain actions now. And I think there, there are certain things that are common sense that we can do. Uh, for instance, on our voting laws. We can make sure that illegal aliens aren't voting. Certain states have enacted laws to say, you know, uh, put citizenship requirements, but also making sure that your local boards are checking or double checking that. When, you get, when the local board gets a social security number, that they're double checking and verifying the citizenship status. And there are also simple measures too, like to require that your local board of elections, uh, when they mail out those sample ballots, if they get one back that has a bad address, that they follow up on it. And you can actually mandate that, Arizona did that, to mandate that into law to make sure that if you're sending out these sample ballots, if somebody gets it, 
that isn't supposed to be voting doesn't take it down, take that as that person and vote, you know, fraudulently. Yes, it's a crime, but uh, you know, a lot of these things we're talking about are already crimes, but they're not being enforced. So what we're looking for and what states have to look for are ways to enforce these laws. And transparency is a lot of it too. You have to figure out who is illegal and who is not when you're dealing with benefits, you're dealing with criminals, you're dealing with voting. That's really the key is transparency and gaining that knowledge.